Now we have done with the properties, which is was where we see the wow factors, where how the dot operators in, uh, use in the objective C, how retain, release, I mean maintain, how the ownership of the content is maintained by the pointers and all. We are focused on one more interesting topic with the objective C called protocols. Now, in order to start protocols, you can relate protocols to somewhat concept of interface in Java. Now, protocols, when I speak to students in the school level or the institute or a lot of professionals also, I say why interface comes into existence with the objectives in Java is they say to implement multiple inheritance. I get shocked. Interface or the protocol are not related to any class, whereas interface or inheritance, you can say inheritance related to the class concepts. It's a relation between the class, whereas interface is not at all a class. So it's not used for enabling a multiple inheritance. It's much beyond. Now, where we say protocols, so when we say protocol, why protocol comes in? Now, no a single entity in the entire world can, in an ecosystem, cannot do all the things on its own. They have to delegate works to something else. There should be an agent who can say, or might say to my employer or my assistant, please perform this task. So when we say perform this task, we sign mutually a contract internally. Okay, you have to give me a feedback or you have to report me through this contract. If anything gets violated, we want to discuss on that. So, so it's basically a contract. So protocol is a contract between the classes or between the various players or the objects in the ecosystem. So it's nothing to do with class, it's much beyond it. So it's more to, to have a coupling where there's a loose bounding. So when we say inherent, the binding is very close. It's more close or you can say tightly coupled. Whereas in a loose couple environment, where we want to bind two players, when, with, whether they are, even though they are not related in a hierarchy, we want to bind them, we say you have to go with a contract. Like in a real world, we say we have to have a contract. So that contract flexibility in a real world comes with the protocols. And it's a very, very important concept because everything in the ecosystem runs with the agent. We do delegate work to each and every one and get interrupted with them when they complete the work. So the protocol helps you to achieve that feature. Now comes a question of say I give a task A to say my employee XYZ. I say you just perform this work and once you're done drop me an email with the report. Over the course of day I'm doing my work and I remember, okay, I call X, Y, Z and say, please do not send me the report, please send to your immediate boss and he will take care of it. Now, tell me whom the X, Y, Z will send the report, to me or to his immediate boss. Obviously, when he done with the work, he was sent to the immediate boss. boss. So, when we say, and it's a concept of dynamic binding. When we say dynamic binding, some people say, you say, Changing the object gives you a different result. That's the same thing. So when a receiver got changed from me to his A to his immediate boss, the evaluation of report will take place differently because my point of view on that report will be different than his point of view. So protocols gives you a flexibility in a system where there's a close, very loose bounding. And that's the most important part in our synchronous environment. So we got to concentrate more on protocols. So protocol basically is nothing a class. It's just a contract with declared methods, which can be implemented by any class in the system. So when I say protocols, I how do I create a protocol? So it will be at the rate protocols. So it will be at the rate protocol followed by the name of the protocol. Say I say my protocol and you define the functions say so I say declare one b2 and I say end end begins end of the protocol so definition of protocol says declared ones implemented by any class but that's right it's declared ones and implemented by the many class now if you give a close look it's a mess message okay void send report and there's some data which goes through. 
Now this protocol, my protocol, has a method declared send report. Now this send report can be implemented by any class or any object inside the ecosystem and can, after receiving this method and the report inside the argument, he can evaluate the way he wants to. That's the basic concept, right? Now, we have decided on the methods. But in object oriented programming, there is not only the message, it also a receiver. So an object should be there which will be responding to this message. So that your control goes to a dedicated class. So there is called something called delegate. Now how do you create a delegate? Now any class, uh, sorry, uh, any object in the ecosystem can be the potential receiver. So who will be the potential receiver? I don't know. So that common type will be ID for the delegate object. Now, that, so object will be of type ID. In angle bracket, you have to define the protocol template. So it defines was this and this and I say name Ellie. So what we do, we say this object will be the potential receiver for all the message defined in my protocol. Why type ID? Because any person or any object in the ecosystem can be the potential receiver. So this is the way protocol works. Now protocol itself is a huge concept. Now it can be declared once, it can be implemented many times, many places and can be the message can be called. There is nothing called automatic control coming. The control needs to be passed somewhere, then only the control is gonna go to that class. So it can be called many places. Now how it happens? Now we're gonna take practical example. Suppose we have a Suppose there is a class called ABC. There is a class called ABC. Now the class ABC wants to get a rectangle. There is another agent called rectangle. So we say rectangle extends an S object in an ecosystem. We have enter interface. He declares some state, he has some methods and says now, ABC wants to communicate with rectangle class. So what does ABC does in its implementation block? In implementation block, he want to create, say, an object of rectangle, say, rect1, with some alloc in it. Everyone agrees with it? Now, to initiate a process with rectangle, he have to call the method from the rectangle, right? So say, dot m of rectangle say star so there is a method in a rectangle which starts with the process of getting the rectangle now, now this is a special class it gets it takes the data from the sender request to the server get the 3d model of a rectangle and send back to the abc class now in that process, it might take time for the rectangle to get the data from the server. But I don't want ABC object to be weighted. He wants to be asynchronous environment. They should be working in a multi-threaded environment. So might an object B starts going down with other perform it might perform some other things till the time rectangle comes. And when he receives the rectangle, he might show that rectangle in his view. So I say rectangle vet1 say start. So a control from here goes to this class. Now here he might create some separate threads, he might call server, everything happens depending upon the data which has been sent from the ABC to the rectangle. Now rectangle gets the data. Now how will he gonna give back the data? Because ABC is not at all waiting for rectangle to receive the data. He has started performing. No, it's a day-to-day -day task. When we align our work to someone else, we don't wait. We won't wait for him to come back to us. We're gonna if he's done with his work, he's gonna interrupt us, right? So now how will he send data back to the ABC class? 
So now he needs to know the way where he can send back the data to the class ABC. That means they have to have a formal contract because ABC and rectangle are not at all related in any hierarchy. So they need to have some contract between them so that a transfer communication happens between that contract. Now for that to get enabled, a rectangle class needs to create a protocol which says this is a contract. So a rectangle class creates a protocol, say rectangle delegate, I say void rect ready and with some data type and it says add. So a rectangle will communicate with the ABC class by a contract called rectangle delegate and we are going to send this message to the ABC class. Now ABC is our protocol, ABC imports this protocol and says whenever this function gets called he assumes that rectangle is ready and he might do some modification to its own state. That's what we did, right? Every class can implement the protocol method the way they want to. So declare once, implement by n places, by n number of classes. So now comes the question, this is a message. Who will be the potential receiver? That means we need to create a delegate object. So we say we create a property, we say at the rate property, I say assign, say non-atomic, and I say ID rectangle delegate and I say delegate. I am not mentioning a star because ID itself is a pointer. If I maintain it as a star, it becomes a double pointer. So it's not required. In M, I want to say at the rate synthesize delegate. So characters and setters of the delegate has been created, but by default it's read and write. And some point of some class, a control comes to some place where the rectangle object have to send back the control. So how do you want to do that? So you want to say if delegate is not equal to null because we have to check whether delegate is null or not and I want to say delegate is not equal to null I want to say delegate rect ready and that's it. So what happened? Whoever is the potential receiver at this point in time the control will go to that particular class that's called dynamic binding. Now how will ABC gonna register that object, his object with the delegate. Simple. You have created a rectangle, rect1 has a property called delegate. I want to say equal to self. The self here is a disappointed in normal language. So we say self. Now basically what happened? ABC object, current object of ABC, self have registered himself to be a delegate. So basically out here the reference of object ABC is there. And it says, please send message to rec ready to the ABC object. The control comes here. And then you get a call and then you say start implementing. So basically protocols become the important part where you say asynchronous programming is concerned. So declare one, if now you might have say class PQR. He says, I want to communicate with a rectangle. He want to create, say, rectangle, rec2. I want to say rec2 dot delegate equal to self. And implement the same method. So, the control is going to come to this person when he going to register rect2 object to be a receiver. 
So we can say PQR and ABC are hierarchically not related, but they are similar when they confirm a protocol called rectangle delegate. So all your digital system, all your digital system works on the same principle. If you take your Mac, if you take a Mac, iMac or MacBook Pro, and if you click on desktop, you see a finder menu coming on top. When you want to click say X code icon, an X code menu will come on top. Why? So whichever application is in the foreground or is in a focus state, that particular application menu bar comes on a menu title. So the region where the menu gets seen is same, but the content of that menu changes depending upon the application which is on an active foreground. Why? So that's why. Each application is considered to be an application object for the OS. So whenever application becomes the active on of become focusable on the foreground, that particular application register himself to be a delegate or to be a receiver for all those menu related events. So when he becomes it, he says, I want to design my menu according to my application. So he might have file, go, windows, while other application might have file and edit. So in each digital system, everything works that way. And that's why the protocol becomes the important concept where we have to buy a different type of entities together but with the same contract. So it becomes very important concept when you want to design a big system. I know it's like a, it's a we have given you just a brief overview but it becomes the most important concept when you want to create a client server architecture or a synchronous architecture where you can have different types of objects interacting with the same we have a really don't have any relation but they need to get bind loosely with some contract and that is protocol and now if you see in java interface if you implement any interface we have to implement all the methods defined by the interface so it's a strong binding contract if you are coming in my contract you have to follow this clause but objective c have given a real time variation you might have a contract where it says this clauses are fixed but these are optional clauses depending upon the situation the clauses will be coming like so here by default all the functions are required so if abc says i want to confirm rectangle delegate you have to implement that method but that is a flexibility to say optional so if i declare something optional and i say void did receive red data some optional method in the protocol but this is an optional so ABC will say I don't want to implement this method so it won't implement so it gives